Whatever we, we learned, thanks to our mashayikh, they tell us that whatever they learned is a drop in an ocean of their shaykhs. And then they tell us all the mashayikh from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu until this time, all the Sahaba that came before them, Tabi'een and so forth, all the way to Prophet Sallallahu that their knowledge is a drop from the ocean of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Only one who, only Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows Qadr and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we are, even with what little we know, we are uh, sinking. We are, what do you say, when you drowning. With whatever little, even just reading the words of Mawlana Imam Musayri. He's not just a poet. Imam Musayri. Where did he learn this? He learned it from his Shaykh. I think Abu Abul Mursi al-Abbas in Egypt. Abu Abbas al-Mursi. Shaduli. Who learned it from his Shaykh, who learned it from his Shaykh, who learned it from his Shaykh, all the way to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who learned it from the Sahaba, who learned it from Sayyidina Muhammad Like that. That's the importance of having a chain. Having a living chain. To Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because it's alive. Because that faid and that barakah and that light comes, moves down that chain from one man of Allah to one man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why we are celebrating tonight. If we didn't learn from real mashayikh, we would be out tonight a normal night. Isra and Mi'raj would be a story. Maybe the Imam will give it five, ten minutes. They read it. And everybody goes home, as Sheikh Taras said. But when you read those who know something about Prophet's words, you understand where this is coming from. This chapter 7, Imam Busayri, Sarayta min haramin laylan ila harami, kama sara al badru fi dajim min al He said, he started with Isra, that you went from one haram to another, just like as the moon travels, traverse the sky, like that. Wa bitta tarqa ila an nilta martabatin manzilatin min qabi qawsayni, lam tudrak wa lam turami. And he say, and that night after Isra, you kept ascending and ascending and ascending and ascending from one level to another, from one level to another, until you reached a level, manzilatan, nearer than two bows length, no one before you have reached, no one even thought to reach. No one even knew it can be reached. Well, I'm Turami. It means it, it didn't cross anybody's consciousness that that is attainable, what you've attained. Sallallahu. This is these are the words of Imam Musayr. رضي الله عنه. وقدمتك جميع الأنبياء بها والرسل تقديم تقديم مخدوم على خدمين. And then all the prophets in Jerusalem, in that journey, put you forward ahead of them, just as the servants or the the, the, the servants put ahead their master. Makhdoom ala khadam. Khadim, yeah. Anbiya Allah to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they put him ahead like he, he is Sayyid Bani Adam. He said about him, I am Sayyid. If Allah grants us to make khidmah for, for Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are from the luckiest ones. وَأَنْتَ تَخْتَرِقُ السَّبْعَ اتِّبَاقِ بِهِمْ فِي مَوْكِبٍ كُنْتَ فِيهِ صَاحِبَ الْعَلَمِ اللهم صلي وقدمتك وَأَنْتَ تَخْتَرِقُ السَّبْعَ اتِّبَاقِ بِهِمْ With them, he said, with the prophets, 
you, you penetrated one heaven after another. Fi mawkibin. In a procession. In a celebration. When uh, now you have processions bringing. Celebration, procession. You are the main dignitary of that celebration. You are, you are the one holding the alam, the banner. حتى إذا لم تدع شأوا لمستبق من الدنو ولا مرقى لمستنم until you left you left no goal no one can يعني you, no greater goal here for the seeker of eminence and proximity means you left no way for anyone to reach you what you reached من الدنو in terms of nearness to Allah وَلَا مَرْقَى لِمُسْتَنِمِ and, you, and no one can ascend where you want. خَفَطَّ كُلَّ مَقَامٍ بِالْإِضَافَةِ إِذْ نُدِيتَ بِالرَّفْعِ مِثْلَ الْمُفْرَدِ الْعَالَمِينَ He said, he said every other station attained by all the great servants of Allah. And the prophets are the greatest servants of Allah, even exceeding angels. And after them, the angels, the chief of angels. Sayyidina Jibreel, Sayyidina Israfil, Sayyidina Mikail. After, after the prophets, he said, all the servants of Allah, whatever station they have attained, you made their station by where you reached, made their station as if it's low. Khafatta means you brought down all other stations. So that you attained. A connection, a nearness, a hidden nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a hidden connection, mustatirin, from all eyes to see, from any, from all perception of creation, whatever you attained of nearness and closeness and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one knows, no one can know. Wasirrin, and a secret, no one can know that secret. فَحُسْتَ كُلَّ فَخَارٍ غَيْرَ مُشْتَرَكٍ مشترك وَجُسْتَ كُلَّ مَقَامٍ غَيْرَ مُزْدَحِنٍ You attained every honorable title and station attainable. That no one can be even partner to you in what you attained. غَيْرَ مُشْتَرَكٍ No one can attain that. وَجُسْتَ كُلَّ مَقَامٍ غَيْرَ مُزْدَحِنٍ And every maqam غَيْرَ مُزْدَحِنٍ means no one is a... There's nobody on in that queue and line. You're the only one that attained there. There's no one behind you, no one before you. Whatever you've gained of stations, of honors, is that these honors are no one can imagine. No one, no one can even comprehend, no one can know. And then the last two verses, Bushra Lana, and this is where, where these majalis are important. Imam Busayri, he tries his best to describe the greatness of your Prophet, the magnificence of Sayyidina Muhammad. The honor of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The stations that he may have attained, he, he tries his best, his hardest, but if you, read the, if you read the verses, most of it he says, secrets, unknowable, unattainable, no, no one can reach in these verses. Means this mind here cannot know Prophet's greatness. But he said, you should know that you as a Muslim have been honored. With what? With knowing him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa With following him. With coming to make salawat on him. With showing respect to him. This is your honor. As much as we understand about the greatness of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as much as we strive to honor him, as much as we become honored. And 
Min al inayati ruknan ghayra munha. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted you such support that no ruken, ruken is uh, like a pillar you lean on, cannot be demolished. That ruken, to be a follower of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to know, to love Sayyidina Muhammad, that, that pillar cannot be demolished. Bi akram ir rusli, lamma da'a Allah da'ina li ta'ati, bi akram ir rusli, kunna akram al umar. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Allah called us to obey him, because he is the noblest one, we became the noblest of nations. Because we, he is the most honored one, we became the most honored of nations. These, some in our community, and I was asked to maybe elaborate a little bit about why, why is it important? Why is this important? We just pray and fast and, and do our uh, five pillars. And why, why is this? Where is this coming from? The mawalid and the majalis. And if we haven't understood why we do this, is because Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, they, they believe that we need a wasit, that we need intercession, that we need a means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, say in the Holy Quran, seek the means to your Lord. And the greatest of means is Sayyidina Muhammad <laughs> To reach Allah's pleasure is Sayyidina Muhammad <laughs> All the prophets of before were honored to be praying behind your Prophet ﷺ. And they were even in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the ahd on them. He said, if during your time a Prophet comes to you, that you have to support him. You have to uh, help him. You have to follow him. And they all signed the contract, even Ambiya. Some believe that prophets, khalas, they leave dunya, they can't benefit anymore. And they really build uh, big walls and they stand behind them with guns and they're shooting everybody who says otherwise. Yani, metaphorically, shooting everybody. But, the, but sometimes even physically, <laughs> if you don't agree with them. But the idea is, in, in Isra and Mi'raj, and we'll end with this, inshallah, in the happening of Isra and Mi'raj, we, the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad wasallam, benefited from two prophets that came before us. If we read the happening of Isra and Mi'raj, what Sheikh Ishtiaq was talking about, that when Sayyidina Ibrahim was leaning and he says, Akri salam minni li ummatik. He says, send salam to your ummah from me. And when we hear that, we say, Ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala Nabiyyina salam. We send salam back also. Because why? Because they're dead? Or because they're alive? This is, when was Sayyidina Ibrahim a prophet? When did he leave dunya? Anyone knows? I don't know either. So, <laughs> I'm not going to claim to know. <laughs> but let's say thousands of years. They say, they say Sayyidina Musa 3,500 years ago. For, okay? So Sayyidina Ibrahim before that. Okay? Thousands of years ago. And after Prophet Sallallahu went on Isra and Mi'raj, he met him in the seventh heaven. He says, send your Ummah Salam Minni and tell them that the, 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 the soil of the jan Jannah is fertile. Yan, ready for planting. And it is, you don't have to climb up and down. It's like flat, ready for you to plant. You don't have to till, you don't have to do anything. What is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah? In the other narration, you know, the uh, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa akbar. 
you plan them in heavens. Yani you recite now, he taught us this, uh, this uh, faida. Right now, you're sitting here, I'm sitting here. We say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa la ilaha illallah, Wa la hawla, Wa la quwata illa billah. We are planting in heaven. La shak wa la shubha. 100%. Why? Because Sadiq al-Masduq said it. Informed us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are planting, as we're sitting, we are planting in heavens. That's one, one benefit. This is a prophet from 5,000 years, let's say, or more, 4,000 years. We are benefiting right now in 2024 <laughs> from something he did after he left dunya. Not during his life, because they would say, oh, in his life it's okay, but not after. Oh, this is after. This is in the seventh heaven, sending us message through our Prophet Type. What is another great benefit we're all now, thanks to our Prophets who are alive? Hey, Sayyidina, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Prophet on Buraq, Sees, looks down, oh, my brother Musa in the Kathib al-Ahmar, at the Kathib al-Ahmar, at the red mound or hill, in his grave praying, oh, dead people pray. He's praying. Prophet Wasallam saw him and went down and prayed two rakats also. Fast forward, we go to Jerusalem. Ah, Sayyidina Musa is there as well. Ajib. Not only he's, he's uh, in many places at the same time. Yani, not only living, but living in, uh, as they say, <laughs> in many dimensions, in many, many levels. Then he goes from Prophet ﷺ, then he goes to uh, the, the sixth heaven. Oh. Sayyidina Musa is there as well. Ajib. On earth, in Jerusalem, and, uh, and then in the heavens. And not only that, Sayyidina Musa sees Prophet ﷺ coming. He says, what did Allah give you? He says, oh, 50 rakahs. He says, oh, I've, I've tried my, my ummah. I tried my, I tried them. They will never do it. <laughs> Go back and ask uh, less. And Prophet Sallallahu look at the humility of Sayyidina Muhammad. He, he's, he never said no, Prophet Sallallahu except when Allah's uh, rules were transgressed. But people ask, Sayyidina uh, Musa asked, he said, okay, went back. How many times he went back? Went down from 10, from 50 to 5. Sheikh, how many? Four times or five times? I don't, I'm not good at math. Five. Five. <laughs> Nine times? Nine times. Nine times. Nine times. And where, where is this? Where's your Prophet Sallallahu Coming to the sixth heaven. We said in earlier, I don't know if you, if you read the seerah, that Qaba Qawsayni Awa Adna, where Prophet Reach, is beyond even the seventh heaven, beyond Sidrat al Muntaha, beyond all these. Prophet went back and forth nine times. Open access. <laughs> Doors, the gates are open. Come and go. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To where? To where there is nowhere. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Like that. Tayyip, here we are, 3,500 years later, we are, we just made prayed Isha. And inshallah tomorrow Allah grant us to pray Fajr. And we are all beneficiaries of the prayers that who? Uh, Sayyidina Musa, imagine you had to pray 50 prayers. Imagine now, we, if we have to pray 50 prayers, 50 prayers means every prayer five times, any 10 times, 10 times Aisha, let's say, 
10 times Maghrib, 10 times. You are now sitting after Isha praying 10, 15 minutes is done. We are sitting now, we're going to eat. Otherwise, we won't have time. So we are sitting here benefiting from Sayyidina Musa's advice in the heavens. And they say, MB are dead. They can't benefit you. And this is if Sayyidina, if Anbiya who are, who are taking from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is their Imam, what about the benefits that the Ummah is receiving from its Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Now and yesterday and today and until Judgment Day and after Judgment Day and on Judgment Day and in the heavens, benefits after benefits because of your Prophet so when you read when you read this this is this these are ibar for us and also so that some person doesn't come and we go to a masjid and say oh bid'ah and kufr and shirk brother you know you're making shirk with Prophet no this ummah is masuma Prophet said I, I you will not make shirk after me in the hadith, you will, I don't fear shirk for that for my ummah. Ummah will never make shirk. Look east and west, north and south. Look anywhere where anybody from the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad even claimed that Sayyidina Muhammad is partner with Allah. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe with other, maybe with with some of the Sahaba, maybe with some, uh, but never Prophet because he has the isma. Allah says about Allah safeguards you just by his body he safeguards him what's more important to prophet his ummah his, the faith of his ummah or his his uh, physical being so don't listen to these people love your prophet وسلم, honor him praise him be with those who praise him and honor him and love him inshallah